you know, I've been all over, you know, Barcelona's a tight city, and, and Paris, and, you know, the West Coast, and the East Coast, and there's all these cities all over the place, but love is so perfect, and it's set up so right that, you know, you, you can't get any better than that place. The last days of love, it was like everybody knew, this is it, like it's getting shut down. Yeah, it's just at the end, like, everybody just got to dive bombing into the fountain left and right, you know, kids just going for the glory. be like 25 kids sitting around the gap watching like whoa whoa you know I can't believe how much shit went down at love when they knew that there was a month left I mean when Popular to switch ollie that was before winning switch back so when he did it I was just riding my bike by or something I don't even know what and you know, and I'm like, Fat Phil damn well knows it's illegal to skate here. Like, there's no way he's running with a generator and lights. <laughs> Pavlardo switch Ollie did in like two tries or something. I was just like, oh my god. Break this shit down. Let's get out of here. Like, this is a blessing. Like. There isn't a cop driving by, you know what I mean? Like a couple heads were attacking it at the ending, but you know, certain heads tried, but not too many people landed stuff. Wennings trying switch heel flip almost did it. Came so close. Switch heel flip. He's just trying. Landing on it, just pile out, bending his axles so bad, breaking boards. Well, I've seen a lot of people try a lot of things into the fountain. That fountain gap has taken out many of people. Flew all the way to Philly, basically just to uh, frontside flip the gap. He came with like two boards, put another one together, and warmed up, and then just went frontside flip, perfect. In a leather jacket. And then Chris Cole just waltzes in. You know, like I knew Chris Cole was good, but to waltz in there and just do the sickest tricks down the love gap in the course of two days is amazing. Well done, Chris Cole, man. I was blown away when I saw that. Oh, God, one of the most insane things was Jeremy Ray. Frontside 360, I mean, nobody can frontside 360 like he does. And I guess he didn't ride away perfectly clean, but he did it. So I mean, if Love Park was still there, it would just be like, I think everything would be done down the Love Fountain, you know? It's just, it's, I'm gonna miss that, you know what I mean? Knowing what people did over the Love Gap and just everything. Well, uh, Love Park was a part of the thesis that I did at Cornell in 1932, which was a plan for the future of downtown Philadelphia. I uh, decided to make a park at the 
uh, downtown end of the parkway. Of course, uh, the actual design of it itself in detail, I didn't do. Uh, I was then director of the planning commission and had many duties. The design itself was done by an architect called Vincent Clayton. And uh, neither Vincent nor I, I think, would have had the slightest uh, premonition that our work would become world famous. And I think if we had tried to do something world famous, we would have missed. It was probably like 87. We used to take the bus on Saturdays, get dropped off and skate all day, take the bus home. That was like one of my first experiences going to Philly. And you know, we'd wind up at Love, but Love Park really was just another, spa another spot to skate, but not, not what it turned to be. With the skateboard media confined to California, Love Park skaters didn't gain wide recognition until videographer Dan Wolf began documenting their progressive style. For sure, yeah. He's, he's from Westchester, Pennsylvania, like where Bam is from, and he would just come into Philly all the time and uh, take trips, like filming people over at Love and stuff. Dan Wolf was just coming out with all the coverage, like from Eastern Exposures to foreign ones, everything. Dan's motivation to film was just as good as Ricky's motivation to put Philly on the map, you know? Wolf was there just filming every day and everybody knew about it. You know, he was one of the few people that had that eye to film a certain way and kind of edit things in a, in a more basic way that people would, you know, want to see it. You know, he was the he was the official filmer, you know what I mean? Like he could already film, but we made him so much better of a filmer by skating through the streets and stuff and we gave him a lot of stuff to work with. Ricky would have like this line that he'd skate from Sub Zero to Love Park every day. It was just like a perfect run that he'd take every day. And none of us really were like anybody. A lot of California people saw it and it kind of revamped a lot of people about skating. I was there the first day Stevie Williams came in and started skating. Boy, you just come in and grab random people's boards and just start skating. I mean, Stevie's definitely is born and raised here. I mean, this is this is it. This is one. He's one of the few dudes who's who's actually from Philadelphia. I feel blessed just to be here talking about it. You know what I mean? Because I'm the only one that made it out of everybody in Philly. I'm the only one from Philly, dog. I mean, he made everything from here. Whether like he did tricks over there or SF and. DC, he still was always known as Little Stevie from Philadelphia, Love Park, and you know what I mean? I mean it shows, I mean he kills ledges, kills flat ground, like kills it, like just flat out kills it. And you know, this isn't a bad place to learn your shit, you know? And here he is, this like new young kid killing tricks, like just learning every trick. It's like, God, how's he progressing this quick? You know, Stevie, definitely, Love Park made him who he is. And um, Josh came through and we was all chilling together. You know what I mean? Everybody was chilling together. Like he was chilling with us. He wasn't chilling with Ricky and Matt and all of them dudes. There was two different crews though because there was the Ricky crew which was like Matt Reason and all those guys, and and uh, and then Stevie and his crew with Jason and Rasul, and 
you know, when Rick and those guys would go skate a certain spot, they wouldn't invite, you know, the young guys. And when the young guys went to skate a certain spot, they wouldn't invite the older guys. And so there was always this weird little tension. I don't know, it seemed like Love Park was segregated. It was like, yeah. they had their click and we had our click. And it was just like, it was just always tension and beef when we should have just all got along. As tensions rose around Love Park, Josh left Philly to pursue his career, while Stevie languished in the crumbling scene and eventually quit skateboarding altogether. You know, when I left Philly, I, I was back in Michigan for a while. Uh, I lived in Dallas for a couple years, lived in San Diego and San Francisco, then Chicago, then from Chicago moved back to Philly. And you know, I, I went to Philly on a visit with my girlfriend. And, I saw CV on a you know random street, and I was just like, man, I'm I gotta move back. Josh Kalis actually saved the scene because if he wouldn't have came back to Philly, there would be no Brian winning, there would be no there would be no Steve Williams. Stevie Williams. On 13th and 13th and Market, I'm in a subway. Me and my man Boo's drinking a 40, and um, two people walk past, so two white people walk past, whatever. I look, I'm like, damn, I look like my man Josh. I'm like, oh, fuck it, whatever. Then he came back and knocked on the window. I was like, Stevie, I was like, oh shit, that's Josh. You know, he's, he's sitting at a, in a subway station drinking where I would have hoped to have seen him at love, you know, ripping. And, and it kind of shocked me, like, dang, you know, people are taking this place for granted, man. You can't do that, you know. You, if you got that much skill, you got to bring it out. You know, that's, that's how I felt. He was like, yo, I got a crib on such and such and such. I got you a key, you can live there for free. And I told Stevie, I said, look, you know, uh, if you start skating again all the time, I'll let you stay at my house rent free, you know? I'm like, yeah, right, he gave me the key right there. I was just like, you come live with me, man, and you know, I'll, I'll make sure you, you got a board and shoes and and let's just go skate all the time. And you know, he, he came back like, you know, it's on, let's do it. And uh, Look at him now. Rock it, rock. Rock and soul, yo. Rock and soul, Neo. For my people, this cerebral thought the needle caught. Brought on by my alter ego. A hawk like the desert eagle. We'll talk the crust. Feeble minded motherfuckers. I'll cover the glitz, cause it's not on your wrist. Give you something to twist up. Lift up and breathe in. Josh has built me back up, and at the same time, he built Love Park back up. To, we built it up together, you know what I mean? But I'm steady getting my elbows greasy, put on my back. It with facts in it, this in reality radically left wing in my next breathing with next season inanimate objects with prospects and movement supreme you said yourself who else would I represent why I'm leaving evidence I'm conceiving ahead of it receiving and Josh just like that whole little like era they had right there was just constant love I want to test Mr. Three I versify your whole notions in this thing have been commercialized ready to dance under the pale moonlight you soon fire Surface ties and merchandise theory clearly over the threshold to expose my expose. Hey, obey your thirst and simple page of verse, refreshing the dope. And that be so good, bum rush confusion. My enterprise identifies with city skies and urban manifestos. Rolls up through the chaos to shake plots and pose visions and clothes in the globe spinning. I'm seeing beyond my satellite capture in sight that your eyes couldn't fathom. Filling up the still can spreading over your terrain, changing complexions and the section that you holding down as goes around like a bad karma with mass trauma. It's 1200. Yo, who want it? Cause I'm much obliged. To give it with centrifugal forces, sources beyond the physics. My mind like chemistry convincingly provide and what's officially fly. Straight to your chest, coming off of my mind. You know your armor no match for me. Understandably so, yo. Who wanna test the levels of diversify? Split of the earth and search beneath the way the purpose lies. Ready to dance under the pale moonlight. You soon find what you're dealing with significantly certified. Who wanna test Mr. Three I versify? Your whole notions in this thing have been commercialized. Ready to dance under the pale moonlight. You soon find.
ever since that day, Josh has helped us bring it back. Like, so now it's like so many people coming out of love. Love had the scene again, you know what I mean? Number five. Brian Wenning came through and just pop out to the like nose grind pop outs, just basically set that off. Everybody just started running that trick after him. And I was inspired by it. I learned a bunch of different pop out things after seeing him do it. Oh, Kalis too. God, I almost forgot to mention Kalis. He, he ripped the place for sure. Kellis just destroyed the bump the cans for you know that's definitely one of his claims to fame. I saw a 411 opener and Ricky ollied two cans off a of propped up tile. And I thought that that was the dopest looking thing I've ever seen on a skateboard. I told myself when I go back to Philly, man, I'm popping up in tiles and I'm skating in cans. Carry was always good at like, going anywhere. You can take Carry anywhere, and he's always going to get something good. And uh, if he doesn't do it third try, then he'd like smash his board and throw it against things. And you didn't do it third try, and you're mad about it. Like, what is the matter with you? <laughs> Thirty miles off, tied up, sir. I only have heard this time to rest. Fertilizer, I'm about to hurt somebody. Don't think I'm 
on service line. It's the word of advice for all you heard to learn. Keep it in motion, we blowin', moving. If you listen, go and blowin', the rumors is true. It's blowin', 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 blowin
you know, here the X Games are in Philadelphia, I live here, like, this is going to help. Everything's going to help my shop, love, everything. It's just going to be good for it. Second year comes around, Love Park shut down. You know what I mean? We got all these angry skateboarders, people wanting to leave, all my friends wanting to leave the city. I hated it. Hosting the X Games generated roughly $80 million for the city. But despite the fame and fortune that skateboarding brought to Philadelphia, it failed to change attitudes at City Hall. I think it's April 26th is when it's going to be fenced off and everything. But we just, it just had to be done in order to convince us. So once that day came, it was done. It was just depressing. Just had a feeling about it. Woke up early and dropped my girlfriend off at work and just, I'm gonna take a ride by love. Drive by and there's workers everywhere. They're just, they're putting up a fence around the whole place. Holy shit, they're actually doing it. Like, damn, they're really closing this down. Love Park just opened up to our eyes so much that we saw what we could do with it, did it, and then they shut us down. Just after all those years of meeting up with everyone, skating, shooting photos, and filming, and you just see the park just empty. It's probably like the first time is ever since it was, you know, ever open to the public. It was just silent. I didn't come to Love for a while afterwards to see the fence. They put like all these like pink garbage cans and pink flower planters in there that now all have urine stains down the side of them. It's real attractive. They put all these hideous like wooden benches in everywhere and it's not like they really designed anything. They just kind of took a bunch of stuff and threw it in and that's how it felt. But grass in certain places, they can't really hit certain things, and just benches in front of certain ledges and all that. They kind of fixed tiles and stuff in some parts that were broken up where it would be kind of better, but for the most part, they messed it up a bit. But I mean, you could still skate it, if you could skate it, but they have cops basically there 24-7, so it's hard. The city's stupid because, like, Love Park has gotten so much coverage just through skateboarding. Nothing else has covered it. People all over the world wouldn't even care about it, most of the people, you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's just a park there, you know, let's go have lunch there. But here it's in thousands of videos and magazines all over the entire world. Like, people are coming from every part of the world to go to Love Park, and it's because of skateboarding. Now you're not going to see, like, kids doing crooked grinds on ledges. Now you're going to see bums taking shits, <laughs> like, in the grass. Congratulations, well done, Mayor. Yeah, Fucking idiot. <laughs> All the city council people used to say it was there for everybody to go eat lunch, but never, the only people I've seen there eating lunch were the bums eating lunch out of the garbage can. Really, it was just a, a bum mecca. And far beyond the skateboard world, it was just good for bums in general, I think. Bums are just complete hell, like people just giving birth on a ledge or just taking a shit and smearing it in their hair and stuff, like mugs of hell, fighting, whatever, trying to stab people. The same bums are there like every day, so like you become friends with them, you know what I mean? Like it became a family with these like, you know, homeless people. Cause that's what we got put in the same boat as, you know, we're criminals now. And here we are, like just these young kids hanging out in this park, which is so weird. We should be able to do whatever we want here. We made this place. We made this place alive. Honestly, we made this place worth anything. It was just fucking drug dealers. Dudes chilling up there, fighting each other all the time, every day. You know what I mean? Like, that's all it was. We came here and we gave it life. We gave it to where people could walk by and not feel scared because you got these little scrawny kids on skateboards here next to these fucking big time drug dealers. If these little kids aren't scared, why should I be scared? I'm a 30 year old man coming from work. You know, 20 or 30 skateboarders was safer than, you know, 20 or 30 ex-cons. But, uh, yeah, the skating 
sure, I'm sure it's a problem for people, you know, like people trying to walk through, some kid runs into them, but that's rare, that's random, I mean, it's life stuff like that's gonna happen. But, of course, the amazing thing is that the impulse to skateboard in Love Park is so strong that they, they still go there. The layout, it's amazing how it's laid out, it's ridiculous, you know what I mean? Lines for days, and then you got granite marble. I mean, that's it. It's like one of the best places like to skate, you know what I mean? It's like skating paradise. Love Park was live. Everybody came through, it's girls walking through every day. Oh man, it was beautiful, man. The memories that I have up here, man, it's like priceless. While the fate of Love Park remains uncertain, its place in skate history is unquestioned. To further their cause, skaters and local activists banded together to fight City Hall. Yeah, so politically skateboarding was attracting a lot more attention in the city and uh, we were thinking that there's no official voice for skateboarders in the city of Philadelphia. This summer, leaders of the community formed the Skateboard Advocacy Network. Without the Skateboard Advocacy Network and the skateboarders for whom they provide a voice, there would be no movement to Free Love Park, and we would not be here today. I would like to introduce Scott Kemp, director of the Skateboard Advocacy Network. Hi, hello everyone. This is what was making people stay in this city. A lot of people here are just for Love Park and the skateboarding scene, and by destroying that, you're destroying a world-famous icon and getting rid of all these young people. If you hadn't stuck and stayed, skateboarders have been committed, you've kept the pressure on, you haven't given in, and even when they said it was over, you said no. And that's what makes the difference. So we're gonna go to each council person and explain why it has to be love, because there's kind of this perception. I think people in the city now realize that Philly was famous for skating, but they don't realize that it was famous specifically for love. You know, if, if love came back, uh, I would consider moving back. 100%. I mean, I'm ready. Once, once it's open, it's over. I'm going back home, baby. <laughs>